Hello, my name is Mark Boyer, and this is a short video to point out that not much has happened. Okay, in the past month since my last video, uh, my son came to visit. Okay, uh, now he doesn't have a Canadian citizenship. He has a Canadian citizenship. Sorry, he doesn't have a Canadian birth certificate. He does not have a Canadian social insurance number. And he's 22 years old and landed. Which means we went to City Hall. Okay? To have his landing approved. Because he's technically a lost Canadian. He was born in Brazil. Okay? And that means before he's 26 years old, he has to establish his landed status in Canada. Well, that's exactly what we did by going to the city of Vancouver. And we came to Marge Colson, apparently the lady who bears the scepter, and invoked the power of the scepter to have his landed status approved. Because technically, Vancouver is a port of call and a port of landing of the Commonwealth. It's also in the city of, you know, it's also in the province of British Columbia under the employ of the Attorney General of Canada and who is considering that the city of Vancouver is actually a principality, which it can't do. That was brought up to as an initiative in Vancouver four or five years ago and was soundly voted down. Now, the reality is, is Everything that is being done uh, by authority to screw us all of everything can only be done if we are in what's called principality, a constitutional form called principalities, as opposed to municipalities. Now, to point out the real differences in this, let's go back to the origins of it. The angels live in municipalities in heaven. And the demons live in principalities in hell. So says all the lore. Now, Vancouver is clearly a municipality. The scepter is supposed to be held by the director or someone appointed. Okay. Now, apparently, since Paul Hancock quit two years ago, over my landed status, okay, no one seems to want to hold the scepter. A lady called Marge Colson says she's not. Okay? And since we saw her, she's on vacation. Okay? I went there with my son, and my son and I both talked to her. And she's on vacation. Okay? Which is, they vacated the office. Okay? Anytime a public official tells you, you know, in response to somebody else saying, Oh, well, could I see this guy? Oh, no, he's on vacation. Well, what they mean there is a legal term. They have vacated the office. Okay, It's totally irrelevant that a human being is there. All you have to do is look up the color of office. And it's a veil that has the pretense of having authority, but has no such right. Okay, It's the office that's doing the screwing of everyone in the world. The human being in the office has is for all intents and purposes vacated the office now the reality is this is insanity okay total legal insanity but you know what the commonwealth had a solution to that it's called the coronation office okay now the coronation office was totally destroyed in british columbia by a man called Wally Opal, okay, who immediately destroyed the Constitution through its power, okay? What can I say? He tried legally to do it by changing the status of Vancouver from a municipality to a principality. And the main factor there is the scepter. The scepter goes from the mayor's office to the chief of police's office where we become under occupation by the prince of princes, okay? The chief of police becomes like 
the elect of the king or the queen in this case, okay? And is imposing uh, the, a foreign occupation by the economy. And the economy is nothing short of Shatan. Shatan rules the world. And they're all kissing its ass. And they're about to pay a price. The city of Vancouver rejected the offer to stamp my son's passport. He had every right to expect in the municipality of Vancouver to have that passport stamp. They flatly denied this right. Okay? And for that, they will all go to hell. End of story. They're being offered. And they're, they're, nobody wants to act. Well, the reality is this. You know, I, I say these things, but it's what they want. Or they would do something. Okay? They, they, they act in doubt that I'm the advocate. Okay? They act in doubt. Now, the reality is, is I really am delivering the new covenant. And the story, chapter and verse. The new covenant is to uphold, with God, is to uphold his creation. And in this way, we will know true godliness. The offer was made to the bar, which is exactly who the men of the Nineveh are. Those who take oaths have all been challenged. Not every last one of them. It's impossible. But everyone who has been challenged has rejected God's goodness. Now, the Bible says very clearly that the Levites will be challenged first. And this I use as a claim of my legitimacy. Okay? There's a guy called Mark Levy. He's Chief Forensic Officer of B.C. A Chief Forensic Officer of the Coronation's Office. And you remember I told you Wally Opal screwed the whole system? Well, he took the coronation's office and broke it into the, uh, the, the licensing of deaths and births and the uh, forensic services. Okay. Now, the reality is, is just prior to me invoking the fact that Mark Levy should arrest Wally Opal, Wally Opal took away the power of, of Mark Levy to do this. Now, constitutionally, that can't happen. And the fact is, is the fact that I was first challenged by a Levite, okay, who is actually doing the duties and responsibilities of what a Levite should be doing. He's a chief forensic officer. Okay? Now, that clearly covers the prophecy that the Levites will be challenged first. Okay? And if Mark Levy thinks his trust to uphold the Constitution and return sanity to the system by pressing charges against attorneys generals, then that's his choice. But he's condemning all Levites. Okay? Fucking bastards, you've been screwing the world for 2,000 years or 3,000 years. And you love it. Okay? You've been put in high places and you don't give a fuck about humanity. You're just, what can I say? You're, it's beyond insults. Okay? I cannot insult a Levite. He wants to meet his maker. Okay? They swear to. An image of man as God. Okay? End of story, chapter and verse, and that's evil. There are many people who say the Bible represents Satan. Well, you know what? It's the story of a people who fell in love with money. And Shatan rules. Okay? The mindset of Shatan which is a concept from Nineveh rules. Okay? When Marv Colson was presented with the fact that she had to, you know, under the, under the Scepter Act, her threat was that I was breaking my terms of probation. 
which is I cannot be in a building where the Attorney General or any of his employees might be. Well, you know what? In the city of Vancouver, in the city hall, there are not supposed to be employees of the Attorney General when we are a municipality. If we were a principality and had they gotten through with the wardships, then that's true. And Marx Colson's only excuse for no one holding the scepter is she hates God. The only excuse, Gregor Robertson, will not invoke the power of the scepter is he loves money and hates God. You cannot love money and God, okay? The entire system is a fraud, okay? Top to bottom, inside and out, run by Masons, and they all hate God. And the story, chapter and verse, the clock is ticking away, and nobody is lifting a finger, which is exactly Isaiah 59. And hopefully, hopefully, it will it will happen before two Thessalonians two, okay? Because really, there is no reason to carry on the onslaught. There is none, okay? The message has been delivered. The message is supposed to end all sacrifice. So says Hebrews ten, okay? It says there in Hebrews ten twenty eight. That, you know, all those who trampled on, a mess, on the messenger will face a fate worse than death. In Hebrews 12, it says that they will bear, you know, the shame forever. Okay? You know, if, if Mark Levy cares not to do anything, then I pity, I truly pity him for the curse that he places upon himself. If there's one asshole on the planet who should believe that death by the assholes is better than capitulating to the assholes, that's Mark Levy. Gregor Robertson falls exactly into that category. Mr. Chu, our chief of police, clearly falls in that category. And all three of them have the authority to arrest an attorney general and start due process because all of this liability is against the city, the municipality of Vancouver. Okay? End of story, chapter and verse. And they hold the key to the voice from the rest. Okay? And uh, care not to pick it up. Frankly, I don't know what to do. Uh, I can't do anything. Uh, I cannot go anywhere where an employee of the Attorney General might be. And I am gladly following that. I, I, you know, it's my universal excuse that I have to follow the law. You fucking perverts. You hate God so badly. That's a message to all those holders, okay? Wake up and shake your head. Authority is driving you into hell. And uh, it's down to, uh, oh, I got a job, man. I don't know if you have an oath. The oath overrides the job. And the big lie is anyone who takes an oath is not of God. And if you're not of God, then you're of Shakan. And you will meet your maker. And I find it impossible that someone doesn't repent. It's just the way it is. Uh, I have to sit back. Uh, Isaiah 43 says it very clearly. Here is my chosen. He has not disturbed the weed. Now, if anyone's saying that I'm disturbing the weed, 
must be one of the hundred people who watch my video. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's it. The humor in that is quite expected. <laughs> you know, authority has done an excellent job of burying everything I do. Okay? And that's just the way it is. They, it, it says so in Romans 11. It says in Mark's prophecy, the Gospel of Mark, that, you know, everything must be fulfilled. Well, everything has been fulfilled. More than once. Just like Jesus said. Okay? The big ones. The 2300 evenings and mornings of Daniel's. Started the day my chest plate was snapped. And I died. Okay? And that's on the day that I filed. Oh, that I died in the, in the morning. But the previous day, I filed my denial of consent. Which is exactly the Daniels, Daniels 8. Okay, exactly after Daniels 8. 2300 evenings and mornings later, I was in a prison lockup where I was killed again by Vancouver police inside a lockup. Okay? And the next morning, Fukushima blew off. Okay? Just a coincidence. Just a coincidence. But you know what? You know, there's another Daniels prophecy that says, uh, that the, 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 some kind of paperwork will be thrown in the city that bears my Lord's name. Well, that happened. Okay? I filed in New Westminster. The, for the New Covenant. Uh, and I filed against the Chief Electoral Officer. Which was a clear Isaiah 3 thing. Where I challenged one of my brothers in my father's house and say, you take this vote. You follow this ship of runs, okay? Now the reality is, is on the day that I filed that, which was September 18, 2009, and you had 70, the 77th prophecy timeline, and you land exactly on the day of Fukushima. Isn't that amazing? Those are just incredible coincidences, okay? Later on that year, okay? On August 2nd, I fulfilled Romans, or Isaiah, Daniel's 12. Okay? That prophecy is 1290 days after the Obama nation that causes desolation is set into place. The mess and, you know, there will be a push to end sacrifice. And that's exactly what I did on August 2nd, 2011, inside the Supreme Court of Ontario, where uh, Judge Dornheimer uh, condemned the entire bar for blasphemy of the love of God. He turned down a perfectly sane offer. I cursed him in the court. God beat the crap out of me outside the court. And uh, I challenged the Prince of Princes back. That's all there is to it. Okay? Again, fulfilling prophecy. Right now, I'm challenging the Prince of Princes again. No, plural. Any one of these Shatan worshippers can act against Shatan. Oh my God. That would cause a rebellion. That would cause a divide. Which they refused to go ask Joanne McDonald, you know, the grand, great, great granddaughter of John E. McDonald, the prosecutor in my case against where she, they, they beat the fucking crap out of me and I ended up getting charged. Okay? And, you know, they dropped the charges. Isn't that amazing? But only after she confirmed that she was working for Shatan. She loved Shatan, and she wanted to die for Shatan. That's why. This is what they want. This is what they get. You know, they care not to divide the house that Shatan is built. Simply because they don't believe the truth that will set and to start. They gotta act. If they don't, time's still clicking and 
time is not on your side, okay? It's running out so fast. We're one berserk move away from shit hitting the fan. And we're one breath away from someone placing a big mess. And end the story. Chapter first. If someone doesn't believe that we must uphold God's creation, then we will destroy it. The message of our end times is supposed to be very simple. And if we don't follow it, we will destroy the world. Well, you know, we've been swearing to this image of a man called God. And that's Shatan. It's not. My God is a consuming fire. And my God is descending on the world. In a solar flare. Real soon. Because he's totally disgusted with the chosen. Okay? The chosen who chose to follow Shatan to the very end. Because after all, that's what the Bible keeps repeating that they're doing. And you know what? I'm just a prophet. And if you read Hebrews 11, it says there very clearly that every prophet felt like an alien in its own time. Okay? And it's because we seek something great. Okay? We seek where it will be the same order in heaven as it is on earth. And that's exactly what upholding God's creation is. God upholds his creation. And when we start upholding his creation, we inherit the earth. And absolutely not one asshole who takes an oath wants it. They want to die for Shatan. That's what's going to happen if a rebellion doesn't occur. And it's more than a rebellion for just any old reason happening anywhere. It's a rebellion because the truth needs to be revealed. I really do have a damage board that pays all debt in the world. It really was rejected on the 1290th day. On the 1330th day, a rock the size of Texas went by the earth. Okay? And that's, you know, it says, the blaster is the one who survives the 1,335 days. Well, you know what? We all survived that one, so maybe we still are all blessed. And you know what? The last day hasn't been here yet, or... I wouldn't be saying this. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, they have to wake up. And if they don't wake up, it's regret. It's so sad. It's so sad. And there's nothing that I can do to pray. Okay. I live on faith alone. And when I'm no longer alone, I will be here. And I'll make way and step aside for the return of Jesus Christ so quickly it will make your head spin. And you won't 